it is a warm, hot, and humid summer's afternoon at Woodbine, Toronto, near the Toronto International Airport. You will hear the big jets coming in over the airport this afternoon, and a big crowd. In fact, there comes one of the planes now, a big crowd, in excess of 35,000 on hand here this afternoon. And a very pleasant good afternoon, everyone. I'm Brian Williams. Welcome to Queen's Plate 83. Valerie Pringle and our outstanding racing authority, Michael McGee, will join us in just a few minutes. The Kentucky Derby winner, Sonny's Halo, is not here. That is the bad news. The good news this afternoon is that it's a wide open 14 horse field. It's a great day. We'll run down the field for you and talk with some of the people involved in this 1983 Queen's Plate as our live coverage continues on Sports Weekend from Woodbine in Toronto. This 14 horse field for you this afternoon. First of all, the entry of numbers 1 and 1A. Number 1 is Sir Caled, owned and trained by Bill Marco. Remember, he had a rough time here with Frost King in 1981. Number 1A is Rising Young Star, also owned and trained by Bill Marco. The second choice in the betting is the number 2 horse, Rockcliffe, trained by Roger Atfield, ridden by Robin Platts as he tries for his fourth Queen's Plate. Doug Hatches, Nikeli's pal, the number three horse, a long shot here this afternoon. Another of the long shots is number four, Second Candy, trained by Gil, ridden by Joey Belois. The favorite, number five, some say Bompego, some say Bompango, trained and owned by John Cardella. Larry Attard, the leading jockey at Woodbine up this afternoon. The first of the three horses trained by Dumas. Jacques Dumas is faux en feu, ridden by Gary Staubon this afternoon. Crushed Ice, ridden by import jockey Vince Braccielli from Maryland. Gone to royalty for Pierre Levesque, Dumas the trainer. Diapason, Jean Lapointe's horse, again Dumas training. He has three different horses from the Winfields farm. Look out for them. Number 10, Regal Decision, David Clark the jockey. Mrs. Bud McDougall paid $100,000 just to have high Chicago here this afternoon. Number 12, Wise Strategy, and a horse that finishes second on many occasions is Autumn Alley. So there's the 14 horse field this afternoon. Right now, we are great to see Ronnie. Ladies and gentlemen, the Ontario Jockey Club announced the parade to the post for the 124th running of the Queen's Plate. This running carries a gross value of $252,310. Today's winner to receive $151,386. The race for Canadian full three-year-olds at a mile and a quarter. And number one is Sir Caled, owned by the Reliable Stable and Bill Marco, trained by Bill Marco, ridden by Richard Doss Ramos. The number 1A is Rising Young Star, owned by Bill Marco, Dom Romeo, and Rocco Marcello, trained by Bill Marco. The rider is Lloyd Duffy. The number 2 from the Norcliffe Stables, Rockcliffe, trained by Roger Atfield, ridden by Robin Plants. The number 3, Nack Ellie's Pal, owned by W.D. Hatch, trained by Carl Chapman. The rider is Gunnar Lindbergh. The number 4 from the table is Second Candy, trained by Gil Robillard, ridden by Joey Belois. The number five, Bompango, has skipped the post parade. Bompango is owned by Carl Cardella and Partners, trained by Johnny Cardella, written by Larry Attard. The number six from the J.L. Levesque stables, Fared and Fair, trained by Jacques Dumas, the rider is Gary Stallball. Number seven is Crushed Ice, owned by the Kinghaven Farms, trained by John Tamaro, written by Vince Brachiel, Jr. And number eight is Pierre Levesque's Gone to Royalty, trained by Jacques Dumas, the rider is Yves Turcotte. Number nine, Dia Passant, owned by Jean Lapointe, trained by Jacques Dumas, ridden by Jean Leblanc. Number 10 from Winfield's Regal Decision, trained by McDonald Benson, ridden by David Clark. Number 11, Mrs. John A. McGuire, Chicago, trained by Ken Sterling, ridden by Hugo Detfall. Number 12 is Wise Strategy, owned by the Meadowview Farm and Ventura Stables, trained by Mark Whittingham, the rider is Richard Grubb. And number 13 is Autumn Alley, owned by Lou Stieglin and Alex Alexander, trained by Bill Stewart, ridden by Dan Beckon. Following the running of the Queen's Plate Stakes, the presentation to the winner by the Honorable John B. Aird, Lieutenant Governor of Ontario, the presentation in the winner's enclosure in the infield. Let's talk about Bompango, first of all. He's a wonderful story. He was claimed for 40,000 bucks. He's won over 130,000. He's actually the big shot in the race. There he is right there. He's a son of Upper Case. Larry Attard is the jockey. Della family were the people who put up the 40,000 to claim him at Fort Erie from Gordy Huntley. And they'll never ever rue the day they did that. He's been a great success. 
a marvelous galloping winner of the Queen's Plate Trial Stakes with 126 pounds. He won by five going away in the last two weeks. He's trained like a champion. He really, in his own right, has stood out. He's ridden, as you say, by Larry Attard, Michael. Attard is the leading jockey here so far in 1983 at Woodbine, and we talked with Larry just a short time ago. Well, uh, we agree with his flip, uh, and uh, I told my agent to uh, stay away a little bit, you know, to got another horse to ride. I never say I don't want to ride them. I just told him, you know, if we got another horse, we ride another horse. And now come the other way. I want to ride them back. Because <laughs> he got a shot to win the play today. <laughs> good, good for Larry. Let's go upstairs for the 1983 Queen's Plate. And to call the race, the voice of Canadian thoroughbred racing, Daryl Wells. Right you are. We're just waiting on Bomb Pangle, who is the favorite, and Autumn Alley on the outside. All in with the exception of Bomb Pango. Here he comes right now. There at the cones. They're off. And Bomb Pango comes away very quickly in the center of the field as Sir Caleb comes on the inside to challenge for the lead. And here they come through the stretch for the first time. And Sir Caleb comes on the inside to gain the lead. Bomb Pango. Wise Strategy closing up third. Rising Young Star is fourth. Second Candy moving up fifth. Crush Dice is sixth in the center. Rising Young Star on the outside with Rockcliffe along the rail. And as they head into the clubhouse turn, they did the first quarter in 23 and 4. And Sir Caleb maintains that lead by a length. Bomb Pango is second on the outside. Crush Dice has moved up third. Rockcliffe is now fourth. Wise Strategy is fifth. Rising Young Star is sixth with High Chicago seventh. Regal Decision is eighth. Second Candy is ninth. Gonda Royalty is tenth. Nack Ellie's pal is 11th, Baird and Fair is 12th, Autumn Alley on the outside, and Dia Fasson in the center, the half and a rather slow, 48. And as they make their run down the back stretch, Sir Caleb on top by a head, and Bomb Pango is getting set to make a run on the outside. They have a half mile to go, and there they go around the far turn. Bomb Pango challenging on the outside with Sir Caleb, then a gap of three or four lengths. Rockcliffe is third. Wise strategy is fourth, and now they come from behinders. One of them is gone to royalty, the other is Dia Fasson, but they're far back. And Bomb Pango has now moved into the lead by two lengths. And as they come up to the quarter, a quarter of a mile to go, it is Bomb Pango. He's in charge, and here they come into the stretch. Bomb Pango's on top. Sir Caleb is second. Rockcliffe is third on the rail. Gone to Royalty now making a late bid on the outside. The question, can Royalty get up there? But no, Bomb Pango has the lead. They have a 16th of a mile to go, and it is going to be Bomb Pango. He is going to win the Queen's Plate. And here he is, Bomb Pango, the winner. The margin of about four lengths. Sir Caleb second, Rockcliffe third, Gone to Royalty fourth. Rising Young Star fifth. Then back to Dia Fasson, Baird and Fair, picking up the stragglers there. Wise strategy. Nack Ellie's pal, Crush Dice. And back to High Chicago, Autumn Alley, Second Candy, and Regal Decision. And a most convincing win for Bomb Pangle, the favorite. That is the unofficial result. A great for Larry Artar, the champion jockey from Malta and here he is coming for home and he had to really go to leather as they say in racing watch him lay this whip on he doesn't want him to go to sleep wants him to keep running and this horse is game and courageous he's digging in Sir Caleb has not fallen away and you can see them coming through the stretch no change in the order here the speed the first two held up bum pango or bum pango with Larry Attard for the Ard Cardella family coming to the wire and he is a most convincing winner here at Whitbine this afternoon. Well, Michael McGee, you said I hesitate to call a winner, but I'm going to go with Bomb Pango. You were dead on. Very, very good race from a standpoint of the four. number one, Sir Caelan went off at eight to one, will finish second, and number two, Rockcliffe with the Northcliffe stable, Robin Plus the jockey was third. Stay with us. We'll have lots more to come as we continue our live coverage of the 1983 Queen's Plate from Woodbine in Toronto. Bob Pango wins it.
Attar, the winner of the 1983 Queen's Plate, uh, he ran a very slow final quarter. I think it was 28 seconds. A fast horse would have done it in 25. I don't think the Cardella family, though, is complaining here this afternoon. Valerie Pringle, you talked to Pauline earlier. Yes, I did. You know, one thing that's terrific is that everyone always assumes that horse racing is the sport of millionaires. And here are the Cardellas, and Johnny's a trainer, and Brooks is a messenger better up in the turf club, and they've claimed this horse for $40,000, and this is just the highlight of their life. Look at Pauline. She's thrilled. Isn't that great? Wednesday, she's back at work in the turf club taking the bets. You know, other people are making on other horses, but this is just a dream come true. They call her um, Cardella Cinderella. Larry Attard, the winning jockey, denying Robin Platts, who was third on Rockcliffe, a chance to make history here by becoming only the third jockey to win four Queen's Plate Stakes races. You know, I did the Canadian Grand Prix this year in Montreal. The Italian cars finished first and third. Cardella's Italian. He came up to me Thursday. He said, listen, you're good luck for the Paisans. We'll win on Sunday afternoon. Well, can you imagine after the World Cup soccer, St. Clair and Toronto was jammed. I guess the city will be going crazy over this win. Michael McGee right now is in circle. Mike? Here we are now in the winner's circle with Bompago, or Bompango and victorious jockey Larry Attard, who avenged that near miss with Wayover two years ago, owned by the Cardella family, trained by John Cardella, and a horse, a son of uppercase, that has really come through in Cinderella fashion throughout the year, won the achievement and then came back here in the Queen's Plate trial as a rank outsider and galloped home an easy winner. Very strong the last end of it and since then trained to perfection by Cardella. Did everything he was asked to do. He was a horse that was difficult, so difficult that Attard himself admitted he was reluctant to ride this horse two months ago, but people persevered. Ella himself, there you see him exchanging a kiss. He decided to change the bit from steel to leather and the horse has settled down enormously since that happened. There'll be an awful lot of, an awful lot of cheering. There you have Polly Cardella, wife of John. An awful lot of cheering with this horse when he gets back to the barn today. An unbelievable ending to a story. A group of people who've just loved horse racing. It's been their life. They've been at the racetrack. John Cardella would never ever be ashamed to say he's a racetracker. It was, and there's the trophy for this year's Queen's Plate Stakes held by a very happy Larry Attard and the Cardellas. All right then, I think now we go back to Brian on the other side of the stand. Valerie, you tell me right now, the people out in Prince Edward Island are standing up and cheering why? They are. Polly Cardellas from PEI and they're all screaming, she said. They're all supporting her out there, so I'm sure they're having a ball.